Well, if this isn't also a surprise, let's see how Nintendo's unofficial apology for John Leguizamo goes. Before we begin, please subscribe to help build my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. The Super Mario Bros. movie opens with Mario and Luigi as plumbers in Brooklyn, having just blown what little savings they had left on a commercial in order to attract customers. The one and only customer they do get goes swimmingly, until the dog attacks for no good reason and they're out like Fred Flintstone. Back at home, Mario is mocked and put down by his family, as they claim he he's dragging his brother down with him. Then in his room, he catches a news report about a water main breaking downtown, and Mario takes Luigi with him to go and save Brooklyn. In the underground, their attempt to reach the pressure valve fails, and they fall well below level 1-2 before finding a big green pipe. The brothers are sucked into it and transported into another world. Mario loses Luigi, who ends up in World 8 as far as I'm concerned, while Mario arrives in the land of LSD. The Mushroom Kingdom. Once there, he meets Toad, who he asks to help find his brother, so Toad takes him to see the princess. At the castle, Princess Toadstool, or Peach, has just held a meeting with many of her advisors about what to do with Bowser on his way to the Mushroom Kingdom. There, Peach meets Mario, and he explains his brother Luigi is missing and asks for help. Peach agrees to help if Mario comes along with her to go to the Kong Kingdom to ask for their help to fight against Bowser. After hitting up an obstacle course for some training, the two set off with Toad in tow to request the Kongs for help and lose count of the mind-boggling number of references. First and foremost, I will put this to bed. Yes, Chris Pratt's voice as Mario is fine. I know everyone was afeard when Scorpion said get over here with all the enthusiasm of a wet sock. Well, just like with Mortal Kombat, that was the early teaser and didn't represent the final product. In fact, Charles Martinet voices a couple people like Mario's dad side by side in the same scene, and they're close enough most people won't tell the difference. Yes, it would have been great for Charles to voice Mario, but it's okay. And I gotta hand it to Nintendo, we were all played when the trailer came out and Peach looked like she had the same cavernous vag energy that Bo Peep did in Toy Story 4, and many of us collectively rolled our eyes like slot machines, but I can confirm this is not entirely the case. Yes, Peach is a badass, but she's not a boss bitch. She's not annoying in any way that would make me want to throw her into lava, nor is she ever captured and requires help despite her ability to speed run an obstacle course like Makoto Nagano. She She's a capable woman with the drive to save the Mushroom Kingdom from Bowser. Isn't this the kind of character feminazis want? A strong female character? Oh, that's right. She understands, encourages, and supports Mario. We can't have that. I find it so funny. The movie presents a genuine strong character, and it gets blasted for it. This makes me think these haters grew up watching Fairly Odd Parents and somehow decided to emulate Vicky later in life. Another question I can see people asking would be why does this film get so much of a pass while others, like the recent Mortal Kombat, I ripped the spinal cord out of? Well, that isn't hard, because this movie isn't ashamed of what it is. One of the many problems with Mortal Kombat 21 was the obvious reluctance to fully commit accurately to the source material. As I said in the review at the time, how is it that the production team of fans working with the very developers could blow it as hard as they did? I think that answer is obvious by the final cut. I, I don't think Ed Boon really gave a shit, unlike Nintendo, who followed Rorschach's advice and didn't compromise even in the face of cancellation. This Mario isn't quite the same one many of us grew up with. He isn't the grand and hero yet, so he has to build up to that, and that's fine for a first movie. Peach does what she has done in multiple games. Luigi is played up as the coward he's been for so long, until he learns to take a stand, that is. Although earlier in the film he does have a scene that was basically Nintendo taking the piss out of the first Resident Evil's opening. And the world feels like it could be its own Mario game, if not an RPG at this point, so in terms of accuracy, yeah, Nintendo brought their S Plus game. Now, despite having enjoyed this as much as I have, it ain't anywhere near perfect. Case in point, the Kongs did not need to be in this film at all. They are here basically to introduce the carts and have more people in the battle on Rainbow Road, which, by the way, doesn't have any version of the Mario Kart theme. Yeah, notice that one. That didn't get by me. The only real ape that matters in this film is Donkey Kong, who is not happy that he was beaten by Mario, but ultimately becomes his friend. That's it. Even Cranky's unnecessary. He's, he's there just to be there, and he's not cranky at all. He's 
he's just a dick. The real Cranky Kong would have challenged his son to do everything on his own without getting a single game over. The Kongs only serve to help pad out the runtime, clocking in at only 132 minutes, credits included. So you'll be in and out of the theater in less time than it takes to work out at the gym, because there is so little story here, it is like looking for oxygen in space. I've also heard a lot of detractors claim, this movie is nothing but pure fan service, so it's bad. But isn't that exactly what people have wanted for so long? This is why John Wick Chapter 4 and Dungeons & Dragons have received mostly middling or positive reviews. Fan enjoyment should be one of the highest priorities. As I mentioned in my Dungeons & Dragons review, there is such a thing as too much. The Super Mario Bros. movie is very much on that side of things like Warcraft, with the amount of references exceeding the count in the final battle of Ready Player One. Seriously, my eyes were moving around like I was playing ranked StarCraft 2 again to catch them all, and it does detract from the story, even though many of them are in the background. By the time you're done looking around for everything, you'll be like, huh, what's happening in the story? I have no idea what is currently happening to this timeline ever since our lord and savior Harambe, peace be upon him, was assassinated while trying to tell Agent Black he had information that would lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. The space-time continuum has never been more fucked up than Madonna's face. Either way, here we are, with three weeks of just middling but enjoyable movies, and my only assumption is is the shattered timelines are reconverging. And if that be the case, then honestly, I hope it keeps going. Now, if you'll excuse me, my queen and I are off to go find a new background. I mean kingdom. Until next time, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.